Some authors refer to it as a metabolic toxin that attacks the liver and intestine. Its liver effects are much like those of alcohol. Its dangers are greater than those of glucose. No one discusses the widespread obesity and insulin resistance. Has a lot to do with it? Sodas, ketchup, cookies or desserts. You consume it daily without realizing it and in large quantities. Today we're discussing fructose. Fructose is nothing more than a monosaccharide, a simple sugar that in nature is normally found in honey and fruit. It is widely used in the food industry as a sweetener in the form of high fructose corn syrup. It's present in drinks and processed foods of all kinds, and you surely have it in your pantry. Today's video will teach you about the metabolic reasons why you need to reduce your fructose intake. Is fruit or honey harmful because it contains fructose? What daily amount starts to be harmful? Does it affect everyone equally? How is glucose different? Dr. Borja Bandera, an endocrinology and nutrition specialist, discusses the metabolic effects of fructose today. Excess fructose programs your appetite and food preferences. Fructose consumption affects anorexigenic and orexigenic hormones, such as leptin and ghrelin. These control your appetite at any time of the day. Excess fructose can induce resistance to leptin and decrease its postprandial increase, that is, after eating. Leptin levels rise post-eating is a very important task as it is the hormone that signals satiety to your central nervous system. In people with obesity, there is a central resistance to leptin, a situation in which the brain has no break because it does not recognize leptin. So it doesn't stop those appetite signals and keeps eating well above its energy needs. As I mentioned, fructose contributes to this. Fructose is addictive. There are two central structures in your brain reward centers that motivate the intake of some foods over others. They're the ventral tegmental area and nucleus accumbens. The latter is recognized as the pleasure center in the brain and is responsible for addictive behaviors around well-known substances such as nicotine, morphine, or ethanol. Consistent fructose consumption in large amounts reduces dopaminergic and opioid neurotransmission in these pleasure centers. What does this mean? This means that over time, we generate dependence, the need to continue consuming more and more to get the same pleasure response. In other words, the pleasure that food gives us progressively decreases and we have to increase the amounts to get that same pleasure. Glucose and fructose are metabolized differently. What distinguishes glucose and fructose metabolism? There are many differences. Both are absorbed in the intestines, but glucose has two storage sites, one small and large. The small one is the liver and the large one is the muscles where it will remain until the body needs it. The liver and insulin usually regulate glucose production. When intake is low due to fasting or a carb restricted diet, it increases production via neoglucogenesis. When glucose is abundant from eating carbs, it stops internal production and reduces neoglucogenesis. All this to maintain stable levels in the blood, neither too high nor too low and also in peripheral organs. As you're aware, the pancreatic hormone and insulin regulate glucose, which increases when consumed, of blood glucose. Don't forget that it has to reach the rest of the cells in your body to provide them with energy, which includes the brain. After all, it is a fuel absolutely necessary for life. Fructose is quite different. It's not required and has fewer regulatory measures. This issue arises post small intestine metabolism as it only needs to reach the liver. Moreover, fructose neither triggers insulin secretion nor impacts blood glucose levels. Hence, it was once believed, claimed it was the top sweetener. Wrong. It's only left to be removed by the liver without muscle assistance. We don't have two fructose stores, only one. Once in it, fructose is converted into glucose, lactate, and also stimulates de novo lipogenesis. In a high calorie context, fructose stimulates new fatty acid or fat formation in the liver and it also promotes the export to the blood of very low density lipoproteins. Remember, the VLDLs, what did these VLDLs carry? Triglycerides. Therefore, these triglycerides in the blood increase. It's basically a way to use the surplus of unutilizable energy that fructose represents to create fat that we will store. If you want to see your triglycerides skyrocket in record time, drink sugary sodas daily. High fructose intake causes liver insulin resistance, Clearly, the liver bears the brunt of excessive fructose consumption. Drinks sweetened with fructose, which includes those sweetened with sucrose, which remember is glucose and fructose, or with high fructose corn syrup, are very difficult for the liver to metabolize. Not only drinks, ultra-processed solids too, obviously. 
because only the liver can do it in charge of fructose, unlike glucose, which can end up in the many pounds of muscle mass we have. Excess fructose transforms into glucose, but also into fat, which will be stored in this three pound organ we call the liver, hindering its functioning in the long run and generating hepatic insulin resistance. On the other hand, hepatic steatosis, as it is called when there is a buildup of liver fat, can progress to inflammation and even cirrhosis. Do you remember what insulin resistance was? The liver's difficulty in responding to insulin, that is the inability to get more glucose into the cells. The liver in this situation of insulin resistance becomes a machine for exporting glucose to the rest of the organs because insulin is the natural hindrance to neoglucogenesis during fasting. And this, over the years, is the welcome door to type 2 diabetes. And not only that, it also exports, as we said, triglycerides through the very low density lipoprotein which will reach other organs and tissues generating toxicity from fat in the kidneys in the heart or in the pancreas if you remember this is known as lipotoxicity for example we talked about it in the episode with Walter Suarez not everyone has the same risk let's not fall however into exaggerated alarmism the risk of having fructose related issues depend on genetic factors and environmental risk increases due to three key points having a high calorie diet being sedentary and having little muscle mass a person with good muscle mass who trains daily and does not have a very pronounced, very constant caloric surplus will rarely develop problems with fructose. And in fact, in a caloric deficit, all fructose does is help to refill the liver glycogen stores. That's why it's in carbohydrate gels for athletes. The problems arise in the profile of a person who consumes more than 10% of their daily calories from fructose. Remember that fact. In addition, they are sedentary, they don't exercise, and they also lead a processed lifestyle and don't have good muscle mass. If you think that's a lot of fructose, the average teenager easily exceeds this amount and unfortunately the profile of the person I just described is more common than you think the intestinal absorption of fructose. Fructose absorbed in the small intestine via GLUT5 transporters influences your digestive health. This absorption varies from person to person. Symptoms appear when it's compromised. Gastrointestinal symptoms with the consumption of fructose. Also remember that these transporters are saturable, meaning they can't absorb everything you throw at them. Sometimes gastrointestinal symptoms occur simply because you can absorb fewer simple sugars than you're getting to your intestine. And when simple sugars are not well absorbed, they attract water that generates peristaltic movements, diarrhea, abdominal distension, and colic pains. The typical stomach ache after a binge of sweets that I'm sure you've experienced at some point in your life. Notice, many fructose intolerances fit this profile. Sometimes intestinal dysbiosis and epithelium inflammation hinder the function of fructose absorbing transporters. These get damaged and can absorb even less fructose, so any intake triggers symptoms like the ones mentioned. Unabsorbed fructose alters your microbiota. Excess fructose not only harms the liver, but also your microbiota, continuing the digestive consequences. It does this by feeding negative bacteria that generate inflammation affecting the intestinal barrier function and increase digestive permeability. To explore the significance of microbiota in health, tune into this episode with Dr. De La Puerta will delight you. Fructose is converted to fructose 1-phosphate by the enzyme fructokinase in the liver, raising uric acid levels. This reaction is adenosine triphosphate, which will convert into adenosine diphosphate and adenosine monophosphate. These leftover substrates are transformed by the adenosine enzyme to aminase monophosphate 1 to uric acid. Thus, fructose's hepatic metabolism reduces adenosine triphosphate energy levels as its metabolism consumes adenosine triphosphate. That adenosine triphosphate can't be used in other detoxification processes. However, the metabolic products of adenosine triphosphate convert into uric acid, increasing its level in the blood. Important if you have a predisposition to having high uric acid or if you have conditions like gout. Excess fructose promotes hypertension. This has more implications. The rise in circulating urate or uric acid inhibits endothelial nitric oxide synthase, decreasing its amount. Nitric oxide in the vessels, which promotes high blood pressure. Fructose not only affects the intestinal sodium absorption, but also its kidney reabsorption by activating the sodium hydrogen exchanger in the proximal convoluted tubule. So we will have more blood pressure because the arteries will not be able to relax as well and on the other hand due to an excessive accumulation of sodium as well, blood pressure can rise too. Fruit, despite its fructose content, isn't problematic. This can be hard to grasp sometimes. How does the fructose in fruit differ from the fructose in ultra-processed foods? 
Isn't the molecule the same? Why is one harmful and the other is not? Well, yes, it is the same molecule. And the only one difference, but it is a very important difference, is the matrix nutritional in which the fructose of the fruit is found. This is embedded in a matrix of water, fiber, and antioxidants, which makes the arrival of that fructose to the liver much more progressive. Let's be honest, a medium banana has around 5 0.24 ounces of fructose, while a sugary soft drink surpasses 20 grams. The soft drink generates no satiety response. You could drink 2 to 3 with satisfying fruit and you'll seldom overconsume it. A fructose heavy diet equates to purchasing heart attack tickets. We have a meta-analysis and systematic review of 15 studies. The participants were from all continents except Africa. In the study, those who consumed the most fructose had a risk 9 and an 11% higher risk of dying from any cause and from cardiovascular causes respectively. Why? Because fructosylation of proteins promotes clear cardiovascular risk factors, such as high blood pressure, dyslipidemia, insulin resistance or obesity, by the export of atherogenic particles and by the deterioration of the intestine liver axis. Liver damage is very similar to that of alcohol. In fact, fructose and ethanol are just one fermentation process apart. And there are three parallels between fructose and ethanol. First, their liver metabolism is alike. Generate de novo lipogenesis. Both increase insulin resistance, hepatic steatosis, and dyslipidemia. Second, the fructosylation of proteins results in hepatic inflammation, which is what acetaldehyde does. What was acetaldehyde? An intermediate metabolite of ethanol metabolism. Third, stimulates hedonic pathways in the brain directly and indirectly, creating habituation and possible dependence, which is very similar to what alcohol does, if you notice. Remember, ventral tegmental area and nucleus accumbens. It's not surprising to see many people addicted to sodas and highly processed foods. Excessive fructose induces insulin resistance in the muscle. The liver, overwhelmed with fructose, releases fatty acids into the blood and other organs. It also emits triglycerides, which reach the muscle, inhibiting glucose transport to it. Thus, the muscle ends up with a pathological accumulation of fat that reduces its functioning and muscle quality. As a final message, fructose from juices, sodas, and ultra-processed foods can damage your metabolism in different ways. This is especially true if you are a sedentary person and have low muscle mass. Here you have all the reasons you need to quit it once and for all. All and avoid your visit to the doctor in a few years. Thank you for your attention, thank you for staying until the end, a big hug, and keep empowering.